All it took was a moment for Princess Elizabeth's life to change forever. December 10, 1936 started like any other. The princess attended a swimming lesson with her friends. They learned life-saving techniques and, according to close friend Lady Myra Butter, she was really quite good. It was when she returned home and was getting ready to write up her notes from her class that things changed. Hearing cries of God save the king from outside she went to investigate, asking a nearby footman what was going on he explained her uncle King Edward VIII had abdicated, her father was now king. The ten-year-old rushed to speak to her sister Margaret, still processing the news, telling her their uncle had given up the throne. Well, does that mean you're going to be queen now? She replied. When the queen answered yes, she exclaimed, poor you. The extraordinary moment is revealed in the first part of Channel 5's new documentary series looking at the Queen's life. It starts with Elizabeth, our Queen to coincide with the 66th anniversary of her accession to the throne. How would this a shy woman become our future strong Queen of England? The man who taught Princess Elizabeth how to be Queen, her formidable grandmother, Queen Mary, insisted on intensive training for the role and on her say so Elizabeth was sent to study with Henry Martin. Provost of Eton College, the now 13-year-old was shy and bashful with her tutor, apparently often looking to her governess in her lessons. Martin was an eccentric scholar, and was also uncomfortable, though that could be put down to him having to teach the future heir to throne. He sometimes slipped up calling her gentleman, thinking he was back at Eton with his male students. They gradually grew to know each other, overcoming the shyness and developing a strong friendship. Martin taught her two vital lessons that she would often struggle with, but would remember with her for the rest of her life. First was the importance of the monarch remaining politically neutral and second was the significance of the growing medium of radio and film to communicate with her people. This would prove vital later in her reign, meeting her future husband. During the war years, when she was evacuated to Windsor Castle, Elizabeth's mother hoped one of the aristocratic grenadier guards officers stationed there might be a suitable suitor for her daughter. But in 1939, 13-year-old Princess Elizabeth had already met 18-year-old Prince Philip of Greece, her third cousin, and her mind would not be swayed. He waited to propose, asking her to marry him when she turned 20, but their engagement was kept quiet until her 21st birthday. With no one else aware of her agreement she had male friends serve as escorts to any event she wasn't with Philip. The king is dead long live the queen. Most people know the Queen was on a trip to Kenya when she heard of the death of the King, her father King George. What actually happened on that day only really came to light decades later, nearly 60 years after it happened. Her Majesty left England in January to visit the country in place of her ill father as part of an international tour. Six days later she visited the Treetops Hotel, staying in one of the famous cabins sat high in the trees. The princess was keen to capture as much as she could on camera. She awoke early to take her photos and saw two rhino fighting nearby at a watering hole. She knew she had to leave but promised to return as she began her journey to a fishing lodge known as Sagana, about 20 miles away. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away servants in Sandringham were about to wake the king for his morning bath. He'd seemed okay the day before having come back from a shooting party and looked much better. He'd played with Charles and Anne and eaten with Margaret before going to bed. But as the king's valet prepared the bath, which usually was enough to wake him, he realized something was wrong. The king didn't wake. A doctor was called for and he confirmed the king was dead. The code word used in event of the king's death was enacted. Hyde Park Corner, and the Prime Minister Winston Churchill was called. The queen remained unaware, cut off from the outside world as she was. It would be four more hours before she heard the news, how the queen found out her father was dead. A journalist called Grenville Roberts was covering the royal visit for the East African Standard was the one to break the news. Reuters had run a flash simply stating, the king is dead. Roberts asked for a receptionist to get Lieutenant Colonel Martin Charteris, the princess private secretary, to pass on the news. When asked if the news was correct, he replied, quite sure, the Duke of Edinburgh was woken up from his nap. It's said he reacted as if he'd been hit by a thunderbolt. It was his job to tell the queen. He took his wife on a walk and broke the news. She was now queen. It said she reacted with a sense of duty and discussed them returning home, then spent an hour alone in her room. A plane was arranged to take them from the Nuki to Entebbe so they could fly home. They left at midnight. During the flight another problem arose. Her morning outfit had gone ahead leaving her just with a floral dress. 
They landed in North Africa where a new black outfit was sent for and delivered to the London airport so when they arrived she could change before emerging. Arriving back in England her friend recalled I shall never forget, she came back dressed in black, coming down the steps of the aircraft and realizing, well that was it, everything had changed, and being met at the bottom of the steps as queen, nothing would be the same again, her reign had begun. Thank you for watching.